It's time again to smash those small pads. Hey guys, it's Beth, welcome. This is the Smash Those Small Pads collaboration. This is just a small collaboration I do with my friend Sarah, who's crafting and relaxing here on YouTube, and Kathy, who is Stampin' Cat over on Instagram. And each month we take a pad smaller than 12 by 12 and try and use it up. This month I used an older pad from My Mind's Eye. It's from 2012, it's Meadow. And I chose it because I was wanting to make some Mother's Day cards and I liked the birds and the florals. I thought those would be pretty. The colors were springy. So I went with this one. And if you saw my Dino Friends collection video, I took four or five, I don't remember, Jess Crafts paper busting templates and made a plan, like planned it out and shared the process of how I did like a very quick and efficient use of that full Dino Friends collection using her templates. I wanted to try it on a six by six pad and I also wanted to try making my own sketches. So I did. I took this, it's a 24 sheet pad. It had two of each design. So there were 12 sheets, two of each design. And the pattern, this pad was double sided, but it will also work with a non double sided pad. I have six cut guides and templates that I use. And right now they are still in this rough form, like hand drawn on scrap paper. I need to transfer them onto the computer and like actually like design them so that I can share and post them and when I do that I will and I will also I will share the the the, the guides and the sketches individ individually but then I will also kind of share them as a guide to use a six by six pad with 24 sheets two of each design and actually it might not it doesn't even matter how many you could have you know, six sheets, six different designs and four of each. I don't think that matters, but this, this pad did not have any cut aparts. And so it works really well for a pad that didn't have cut aparts. Anyway, I'm still trying to figure out, I'm trying to wrap my head around all of this and figure out like wording, what do I want to call them? So this is actually a sketch I had done uh, years ago um, that I, this is kind of what got me started on thinking like, okay, I can take this and I can do my own sketches and this is a no scrap plan. Like you will have very, very minimal scraps. So this first one that I did, like each one has my little hand-drawn cut guide and then I have a my hand-drawn card sketch. So this one makes one card design, some of them make two, but there were, I used two sheets of each pattern for a total of like four sheets that I cut down using this guide. Each of the guide, well not each, most of them give you a four by five and a quarter inch uh, card mat piece or something to mat the card with and then you have like the other pieces. So this particular sketch uses all of the cut pieces on each card. You just mix and match the patterns. So I've got the card mat and then I've got some of my other pieces and then most of the sketches also like they will give you a scrap that fits on the inside of your card. So um, I've kind of noted that for myself like this piece is extra it can go on the inside of the card. So once you do that I have no I had no scraps from this template set. And then I came back in later and added some extra embellishments. You can embellish these like however you want. You could mat them if you wanted. I was out of town when I did this and I only had what I had with me. And I did have some coordinating blue to go with this color of cardstock with me, but I didn't have any other cardstock other than white. So I didn't do a whole lot of matting. Uh, I was just trying to really focus on, you know, maximizing or efficiently using up this whole pad. So set number two, again, I have a rough guide over here and then I have two different sketches on this one. So again, uses four sheets of paper. I got two different card designs for a total of five cards. So this was the first, it's got a card mat and then this strip. 
So now in this case, when you put this strip on, like there is some cutoff, like you cut off the overhang and those work great as little banner pieces on the insides of the card. And then it calls for a circle sentiment and then I just added some, I took some of the pattern scraps and punched some hearts and then here I just added a butterfly to the strips that didn't have a bird or anything on it. And then this is the second design. It just used up some of the smaller strips that the cutting guide called for. So this was five cards. And then this sketch, again, my guide, and it brings, or it gives me two different card designs for a total of six cards. And so each of these, I will just say, each of these uses four sheets of paper, two of each pattern for me. So six cards. This one, I took the card mat piece and cut it diagonal and then mixed and matched the patterns. And so each one has two different patterns as the card mat. And then one of the pieces that I cut is meant to be a strip that goes across the seam here. And then I've got a circle element and then I again came back in and embellished them. And then the second sketch uses what's left after you cut down that four inch card mat. It's what's left on the side. And I just pieced two of them together to get my card mat for these and then added my sentiment and an embellishment. Um, set number four here did something, I did something a little bit different on this one. I used the same amount of paper, so four sheets, but instead of a single four by five and a quarter inch card mat piece, I cut strips and then used those to create a mat. And then this one gives me two different card designs as well. Here's the first one where I pieced together the card mat and I just kind of alternated patterns. And then added a, these were a little bit larger than I wanted, but they were, a, all, the, all these sentiments, most of them I had printed from my silhouette before I left town. And when I came back, I needed a few more sentiments and I happen to have these in my sentiment stash because they had printed, I had printed them too big from something last year. And I thought they were fine. I will go ahead and use them on here. So this was kind of the size I had originally intended, um, but they still work. And then the other sketch to that is it uses Again, instead of just leaving a full strip over here, I had myself, like I said, it so that you cut these into smaller pieces and then you could put them together in a grid. You could totally mat this. You could mat any of these, but this one I thought would look good with a mat behind the grid, but I didn't have any um, cardstock that matched the greens and the yellows. Like I had a blue, but I didn't have anything to match these particular colors. So I just went with more of a clean and simple look on this one but I think it would look good if it had a mat behind it, behind it as well. And you can see I also did do some Father's Day cards um, for the, some of them didn't weren't overly floral. And then some of the patterns like could be masculine. So I kind of ended up doing both with this pad. This is my fifth set here. Got my guide and then two different card designs and it gives me eight cards. This is the first one. Again, it takes the four by five and a quarter inch mat piece and I cut it into like a one third, two third kind of ratio and then mix and match the patterns. And actually I think on these I just flipped because since my pattern was double paper, I think I just double sided paper. I just flipped to the other side to go with the uh, pattern and then just added some embellishments in my sentiments. And then this is the second design. These I did matte because I had cardstock that coordinated and I think it looks really good matted. I added my sentiment here on the center one. I was able to do it so that I had more of a solid pattern in that center square and then thought that would work for my sentiment and then ended up using some of the cardstock scraps to punch stars to come and embellish some more. So if you do 
my my guides are for just the patterned paper for very little scraps like just I mean it wasn't enough to really do anything with anyway but if you start incorporating cardstock like this you are going to have some scraps so I did have cardstock left over so this was my sixth and final one that I did my guide here and then this one only made one card design but six cards and so instead of a full card mat it just has two pieces that are kind of pieced together just a little bit different look and then the guide gave me the little piece that goes across behind my sentiment up here so I have a mix of Mother's and Father's Day cards from these as well so I had six different guides six different cutting guides and it ended up giving me 37 cards with like no scraps because again anything you do have left can go on the inside of your card um, from this 24 sheet pad so this was really fun it was kind of an intensive process for me trying to like create not only a sketch but a cutting guide and I know none of my sketches are overly complicated or overly they're all fairly simple, but at this point, I'm kind of just starting out here, and I was really focused on using all of the paper. So it's like, how can we get a good number of cards out of this pad without leaving any scraps and, you know, do it quickly? And so um, other than my planning and designing time here, like the actual implementation of it it did go pretty quickly the cards putting them together so 37 cards from the 6x6 pad again hopefully I can get these into the computer and can share them with you somehow um, yes and I want to do some more of these so stay tuned I, a lot of you said that you had an interest in something like this to help you work through your stash you know a little bit quicker so Hopefully I can get some more of these out for you guys. But please be sure to check out Sarah and Kathy to see what small pad they use this month. They are both linked in that description box below. Thank you guys so much for your time and I hope you all have a very crafty day.